Hello and welcome back to another part of Design Your Own Level Tutorial. In the previous video what we did is we created this wall texture using just one simple image that we set up in a material in a specific way so that we can actually change the color and actually create a fake normal map from not even a height map, we just created it directly from the texture. So what we're going to do today is we're actually just going to set up the texture properly inside of GIMP using a basic PBR method and then importing it into Unreal Engine 4. And then we'll just see and compare and see if it works out a little bit better. So that's it. Let's just jump over to GIMP. Now, as always, you will need the don't not um, reference chart for PBR. This is their reference chart. If you have your own values, you're more than welcome to use them. And you would need the texture that we downloaded in the previous video. The links to both of these will be in the description below. So I'm just going to click open. And it's the seamless one over there. Okay, that is fairly old color profile. So I'm just going to convert it. And then this is our basic texture. We don't need to fool around with anything. I'm just going to make a copy of it, which we're going to work with. And I'm just going to give it uh, standard names, diffuse, and I'm going to call this base. Otherwise, uh, those extremely long names uh, kind of get to me a little bit. So now what we're going to do is we're going to go over to the reference chart. We're going to look at what they have as, well, we can consider this to be fairly old concrete. I would, I'm, I'm not too sure. Inside of Mirror's Edge, that looks fairly old and worn and like everything just got plastered over it so uh, we'll go with that we'll go with that value so i'm going to grab that one uh, you can create a new image to paste it or uh, i already have a new image over here so i'm just going to like fill this with that color and then go over to my histogram once again if you don't have the histogram just click on your windows uh, and then under dockable dialogues it should pop up here so if it's not over here, then just look for it over on your windows. So this has got a medium value of about 136. This has got one for about 187. But now I do want to have the ability to change the color of it. So I am going to desaturate this. So I'm going to work with this one that you see there. I'm going to work with the diffuse one that I created. I'm going to desaturate its color so it turns completely grayscale. I'm going to go over to the histogram and see its value, 181, and we're looking for a value of 136. So I'm going to jump over to my... Where is it? Is it levels? Yep, it's the levels. And then we're just going to push it the darkness levels a little bit more. Okay, so that's kind of what we're going for. 136, okay. And back to the layers, I'm going to call this my albedo. And then just using the base, I'm actually just going to desaturate the base because we're not going to use the color at all in any of our other maps. So I'm just going to desaturate it. And I'm going to duplicate it. And ignore there. And I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this the roughness. Let's call it the roughness. And then again, the same thing. We're going to jump over to our reference chart. And we're going to look for something over here. So this is, again, you kind of want to judge where you want it. I want this to be somewhat shiny when the sun shines on it. So I'm, I'm looking for values between 0 0.7 and 0 0.8. So... This is actually something that you can still edit inside of Unreal Engine 4. You don't need to do it inside of GIMP, So, but for simplicity's sake, this is a lot easier. Okay, so this will have a value of 204. Now remember again, and let's just make sure we change that one. Remember that if you push your levels over here, you're pushing down your dark levels. Now we want to actually push it up. But now it all really depends on where you want shininess. Think of it like this, that the darker the parts are, the more shiny those parts will be. 
So if we go something like this, there we go. What were the values we were looking for? Two or four. We actually got pretty close on that first try. So let's just jump back to there. So if you like push your values like this, now remember that all the the black parts are going to be shiny. So let's do 204. Push this down a little bit and then do something like this. All right. So it all really depends on, on what you want to, to do with this. And always remember that if the roughness map, if you, if you accidentally uh, pushed up your white levels when you should have been pushing up the black levels, you can always add a one minus node inside of Unreal Engine 4 to invert those values. And I'll show you uh, at closer to the end when we're doing the material on how to do that. I'm just going to click OK. And that's going to be our roughness map we're back over here. Uh, we're not going to need a metallic map because this doesn't have any metal in it whatsoever. So we're just going to set the metal value with a constant to zero. And then I'm going to just duplicate the base again. I'm going to call this normal. And just see what it looks like. And then I'm going to go into the filters, map and normal map. And as I've said a couple of times, this is a separate plugin that you would need to download um, from uh, the GIMP depository itself repository. I will put a link to the in the description for it. So let's just click OK. You can see that maybe the values don't look as good as what we want them to be. So uh, if you want to get it a little bit stronger without going back to the normal map, you can just duplicate the layer and then set it to overlay. And you can keep duplicating the overlay until you're actually happy. Uh, that looks like a fairly strong normal map. So I'm happy with that one. I'm going to right click and say new from visible and call this my normal final. And then actually just delete all the others. Come on. Okay, just right, delete this one. There we go. And then finally, what we're going to do now is then just export all of these colors. So first, let's start with our normal map, file, export, and I'll call this concrete normal. Uh, don't want a JPEG. I'm going to do it as a PNG. I don't like working with PNGs um, specifically with support with alpha channels and things like that. So you can do it in JPEGs if you want to. Uh, these items are simple enough, so it shouldn't cause a problem. There is one thing I forgot about the albedo map, and that is the fact that this actually has quite a lot of shadowing on it. I just want to quickly see if, if I go back to my base and I invert it. and then set it as soft light if it actually removes so i'm not too happy with the fact that it doesn't really remove too much of the shadow itself so that is unfortunately going to stay like that uh, this wall doesn't have a lot of shadow on it anyway so we don't have to worry about it but uh, generally, if you have something that's got a lot of shadow on it, I would just classify that more as dirt than anything else. So uh, I'm not going to to worry too much about it. I'm just going to reinvert that and change it back to normal. And I'm going to export my albedo. And then last me, lastly, export my roughness. And once again, as I always say that these are reference charts that I'm using. And if you have better values yourself, then go ahead, try it and see if it works. Okay, so now what we're going to do is just jump over to Unreal. I'm going to go over to the textures. I actually want to get a little bit of 
more order here. So I'm going to create a new folder and call this concrete and then import those three that we created. Go over to materials. I'm going to create a new material. Concrete uh, mat final so that we can just like compare it to those two. I'm going to open it and go back to my textures. Just bring this up and then drag this in here. I'm going to feed this directly into the base color, but we can once again just pass it through. A, a lerp or a multiply to get the different color values that we want. I'm going to feed that into normal and feed that into the roughness. I'm going to set a constant value of zero for metallic. And that actually looks, I, I do like the shininess of it. The normal map didn't come through too strong, which is good. I was worried that it was going to come through too strong. And that actually looks pretty good. So if we can quickly set a vector parameter and we'll use the lerp. I'll feed this into A, feed this into B, feed that into the base color. And then we're going to give this a color of See, this makes it nice because we're going to pick a different color if we really want it. Uh, we can do the blue, but actually we're just going to go straight forward with the base color because it does actually look pretty good. So I'm going to click apply. So this is just, as you can see, very basic settings. We can bake an ambient occlusion map of it, but it's going to be very, very basic and we'll probably only give ambient uh, only give any real occlusion on those holes over there. So that's not really going to matter. And well, let's quickly compare the two. So I'm going to go over to materials, concrete final, drag that in. And obviously they're going to be slightly different colors. Ooh, okay. So we need to set those to the same values first. Just see what was it? Six and four. So let's right click texture coordinates, set that to six and four, and we're going to have to feed this into every UV over here. Click apply and let's go back and see what it looks like. And there we are. That actually came out pretty good. It's got like the slight tint of uh, smoothness still on it because of the uh, roughness map that we generated for it. Uh, this one, the entire thing just looks smooth. The normal map doesn't look all that great. So when you compare the two, there's like no real comparison. We're going to have to go with the one that we did um, the old fashioned way and not inside of Unreal Engine 4. So I'm just going like to drag this all over. Oh wow, you can actually like see the immediate change if you do that. There we go. And drag this onto that one. And I think we got one more over here. Blank wall, but we'll give it my shiny texture. And there we go. So we've completed this. Now you can go ahead and fool around with the uh, texture co coordinate values a little bit more if you want to, so that you can uh, prevent stretching or anything like that. But for what we want to do here, this actually came out pretty good. So let's actually hit play and then just see what it looks like. So just on the very, very shiny parts of it, the, the light kind of makes it gray out a bit. But that looks good. Now always remember that you can add a, a lerp to it or a multiply and then you can just add a vector parameter and hook those two up and then change the color on the fly as you want. So we might do that later on, but for now this is like our final image. This is what we want. If you want to like decrease the value actually of the shininess, I think we can do that. Let's quickly see how we can do that. 
uh, I think it might be the same with doing a lerp. So I'm going to right click and add a lerp. Feed that into A. Feed it into the roughness. And then I'm going to get a vector parameter. I like working with vector parameters because you can create material instances from them, which we're going to cover much later on. So instead of using constant values, I like using vector parameter. You can use a constant value because it's uh, pretty simple. It's got a value from zero to one uh, where this one has got color value. So I'm just going to feed this into there. And then you can like set the different color tones. So obviously if we make it like completely white, you'll see that it mixes quite a bit and there's not too much shininess. If we make it completely black, the shininess shines through quite a bit. So it all really depends on, on what you want to do. Uh, if we can compare this to what it looked like before we did that. See, it's quite shiny before we did that. So um, the lerp helps if you want to just to decrease the shininess value. So that is something that helps later on. So let's say that you have a, a part in the game where it rains and something becomes uh, wet and you want to drive the shiny value of it a little bit higher so it actually seems like the object is wet and it's reflecting a little bit more. Uh, then you can do it by using this. So then you won't have to create a completely new material for it every single time. So this will, might make it a little bit easier. So if we see at the value that it is now, that looks slightly better. I still like the shininess of it though, so we're going to keep it as is. So this brings us to the end of this tutorial. If you liked it, you leave a like. If you didn't, you can leave a dislike. Please subscribe and I will see all of you in the next video.